Morning everyone, Ian from DIY Home and Gardening at the allotment, just got up here. First thing to say, what is going on with this weather? Lovely and sunny two days ago. Yesterday, mini tornadoes, hail, sleet, rain, sideways wind. Today, not had the rain, but it is really windy. So it's just crazy, but we are April and it's kind of what April is normally about for us. So um, yeah, let's turn the camera around and have a little stroll, see what's happening up here. Little reverse order, so um, that was previously the strawberry patch. Pulled out all the strawberries at last visit, which was first or second of April, whenever it was that I last filmed up here. Uh, yeah, so strawberries have gone back home, not that I've done anything with them. And that bed has been filled up with manure and then topped off with the soil that was already within the bed, uh, had a good old weed and raked uh, to get a little bit finer. I'm thinking that this is probably going to be a bit of a brassica bed, um, something a little bit more productive than I say the strawberries that were up here, but not quite sure yet. This bed, shallots, uh, sprouting a bit random like it's just been so wet um, and I'll, when we get back on the tour I'll show you a, a little device that I've bought but yeah so uh, shallots are sprouting the walking onions are doing their thing these ones if you remember they're ones that I'd moved from that back end that hadn't been doing a lot so I used well where they died off condensed up made a little block there. Now I had planted some cabbages. One, two, three rows. Out of that lot, I have one and a half, two left. Possibly a third of one there. The others have just been devoured by the, the slugs and snails, so not uh, doing well on that. Uh, another little block of shallots although it does look as though one has failed in the middle. And this bed here, the elephant garlic. So there's one that's not done a lot there. So um, yeah, this whole bed is elephant garlic. Got cloves, corms, browns. So they're doing their thing. A little bit of uh, weed, still wants pulling out. Uh, this bed, a couple of types of shallot, um, onion, then the perennial cabbage, um, kale, sorry. And I actually pulled out the red cabbage that was in here because it all bolted, uh, been chewed. You can see that they've been chewed up as well. Obviously, it goes without saying. It's when it's as wet as it has been, there's going to be a lot of slug activity, especially up at this area. Uh, I built this on the um, last time around, which was my raised bed. Down the middle, I planted out some beetroot. Down the side, planted some beetroot. This section here, parsnip seed. This section here, carrot seed. Not quite sure what that is. A rogue seedling from somewhere and then I had covered it all over just to protect it. Uh, looks like the odd, oh yeah look at that, got a few seedlings, a few seeds have germinated so pop that back over there. Oh look at that, a few, uh, few seedlings germinating under there as well but it does very much look as though the beetroot has mainly been devoured. Uh, these are the last remaining chrysanthemums. Still no growth on them. The 
weeds are growing, but the chrysanthemums are not. So I, I really do hope that something comes up uh, because they are chrysanthemums that I've had for quite a while, these particular ones. But uh, I suspect they're not going to amount to anything. Uh, this bed, so it's got the leaks still in there. They need lifting really. Um, where it's been so windy, you can see that these big old leaves have really taken the, the brunt of it. Uh, I had pulled some of the, the old dead ones off, but um, the grass has certainly taken hold. We had some good rhubarb from those two, which had been the forced ones. Hopefully, um, I won't say this year, but hopefully next year, the others will sort of take off. The flowers on the blueberries. Flowers on the black currant. A couple of buds on that black currant, but not a lot really. And then these that have suddenly gone into overdrive, where well, these were, oh, not were, they still are, perpetual spinach. So um, yeah, can pull some of that as that's getting going. That doesn't look like it's getting going, but we'll see. There's um, black currant. These blueberries are certainly looking pretty good. Uh, this bed, well, still sitting empty. That is uh, going to be the one for the squash. Not even got round to sowing the squash, so I need to pull my finger out on that. Got the two perpetual spinach at the far end. Started digging over this bed. Again, doing the usual, getting the cardboard down, manure, and then putting the sole back. Um, I don't know whether we'll be able to see any, but what I did come across was uh, some more um, random growth from random tubers of the um, Jerusalem artichoke. They'd, they'd found their way, well, I'd obviously missed them and they'd started sprouting, so they were all through here. And then I also noticed now let's see if can... oh here we are look can you tell what that is what those are well they're leaves of potatoes so i've obviously missed some uh, potatoes on last year's harvesting and that's why it's quite good to have a bit of a well a bit of a sort through before you get uh, everything in the ground but yeah this i mean it's a hell of a carpet of weed so that really needs a, a proper uh, weed and sort through now this bed here this was the one that i'd finished well nearly finished a little bit of soil left to get in there and it's already sunk down a bit but um that's going to have some decent compost put on it when i come to do planting because this one here is going to be for the dahlias and i'm also thinking that I might um, perhaps uh, bring up the gladioli to here, I don't know. I'm trying to think as to what to plant in there. And as much as, as much as it's quite nice how it is at the moment, it's not going to be put very productive. So it's either get some flour up here or fill it with, um, well, some radish or beetroot maybe take the opportunity to lift those couple of garlics and pop them up here you know now the red cabbage have been removed there is quite a lot of uh, of space in there so heading back we've got the garlics here although there's a few oh. it's obviously got buried at some point and then struggled well actually no it's got a split stem to it that's what's happened split stem and it's grown out of two points see what that does um, so yeah we've got the soft neck and hard neck garlics here which they had a feed two weeks ago with some fish blood and bone still looking uh, a little bit anemic but it does um, take a while 
but as I say, because it's been so wet, that's probably washed straight down. Might have bypassed the route because the ground's been so wet anyway. But certainly they've got some decent strength to them, enough strength at least to cope with all the winds. Welsh onions, full of flour. Now you can actually eat the flowering stem when it's like that stage and they're quite nice they're supposed to be a bit of a delicacy but to be honest i i prefer leaving it to have the flower open and um gives the the bees or uh, well, yeah the bees a bit of an early treat when they're around when they're out in the sun now the onions they are struggling I gave them a good weed, so they've had some fish blood and bone. But I mean, look at them, they're so spindly. There's a lot of damage from slugs, but they just are struggling to, to get going. As, again, it's so wet and uh, I show you my new toy and show you how it works really. But we'll come to that. And I guess the biggest change has been within this bed. So here we have the earlies, early potatoes, they've suddenly made an appearance. Amazingly, this crude bit of uh, netting over the top has kept the pigeons from devouring all the broad beans as they shoot. And actually, it looks like there's a bit of flower formation on some otherwise quite small plants, but they're doing their thing. And then these are the second early potatoes. That one there, well that, that, that lot had fallen on it. So um, yeah, hence the reason that's looking a little bit anemic. There's still a couple to pop through, that's just breaking. But the potatoes are finally doing their thing. Again, now showing signs of being on the wet side. That's, uh, and the discoloration from the cold and tonight, is uh, forecast to be close to a, a frost so we'll see how the, the crops fare certainly potatoes how they fare now let me show you this little gadget bear with right this is it ph moisture meter now this one got from work it's um, produced by a guard member by Westland it's quite good it shows you on the back as to what your different um, vegetable crops and then indeed some of the plants would like as a pH uh, I dare say there's probably a bit more within that um, uh, yeah so a little bit of detail in that but the interesting thing is I mean the pH is interesting but it's the moisture so let's get to this bed and this oh, probably highlight exactly what I'm saying. So on this, start with, well, let's have a quick look on the pH element. So we turn it to on. So at the moment, we've got the acidic side and then the alkali. It sits in on seven, which is neutral. So just push that into the ground. And you can see that it's actually pretty neutral so if anything for the onions it wants to be slightly more acidic and let's switch it back to the moisture now it's so that is out so out the soil dry pop it into the top moist push it down to where the bulbs are actually sitting and that's gone straight to wet and that is really that's highlighting the the problem that i've got up at here is that it's just very wet so yeah i've been thinking about getting one of these for years never have done and so um yeah thought it was about time really just to just to test whether the reason that some of these are struggling is for the very reason I thought it would be. But anyway, that's the allotment. Once I've finished up here, 
we'll uh, do the rest of the tour around the garden. Right, so I'm back at home. Carry on the walk around. Thought I'd do the indoory bits. If you've not seen those for a while. Little baby dragon fruits there. There's mummy dragon fruit. Going into proper growth phase again. Uh, the turmeric from last year. So one section has died back finally. That other one you can see is dying back finally. It's now going to yellow. Um, the other two are okay. New purchase. There we are. Look at that. Some sizable lemons on that. So new addition. Let's go outside. Let's close the door. There we are. Look how nice that is. I'll just show you. So these are the blackberries. And despite what we think has been poor weather, the blackberries have put on some great growth and plenty of bud. So that's filling out across that fence quite nicely. And there's some good fresh basil growth coming as well. So they'll be able to be tied in. Just have to remember to move them this side of the uh, straining wires. Piece of trees come down. So we've had a few flowers on the pear tree. So that one there was left at the old allotments by uh, one of the other allotment neighbours. So I've got that apple tree, which this year we've actually got flowers that haven't been totally annihilated by frost although we are due one tonight but hopefully enough have been pollinated we should get something still got some nice red stem there from where they were forced yeah. more importantly though you can see there's some fresh growth coming through there the wild garlic just popping into a flower there what I did where we've been harvesting them I restricted harvesting to just taking off a leaf on each of the plants and we've got another little block of it down there as well so let's get to the greenhouse well actually before that look at this so after getting uh, fairly decimated last year Gooseberry got butchered back and look at all of those fruits coming on nicely. I uh, tell you what, let's carry on and then we'll come back. Cool. I had to move the dahlias out the other day just because I had no space, but I'm thinking for tonight they're going to have to go back somewhere protected. There are the strawberries that came out the allotment. So I've not done anything with them. Oh, needs a bit of a water in here. So across the back there, that's all the sweet corn. Sweet peas are still in here. They need to get out. Snapdragons. Then got some cabbage and leeks. Some trial garlic. Black hail there. Different leek. Lettuce. Beetroot. Two types of spinach, uh, flowers at the back, a couple of types of celery. And then <coughs> here is the um, scarlet um, oh, red cabbage and kale, red Russian, that's the one. Uh, got the scarlet orac at the back there, which kind of struggling a bit. It's definitely getting the greenhouse. Okay, oh, miles warmer in here. Uh, right, I'll show you this. It's the Solanum quintoriensis or Naranja. Got a flower to it, won't get pollinated. Not in here because it needs to be pollinated by bees and it can only be pollinated by bees. Ginger, looking nice and big already. Let's have a look at those stems. 
tomatoes. Down here is the tea camellia that they've now started going into some nice leaf production. Let me just uh, close the door properly. Well, went the other route, I've opened it just to let a bit of uh, air circulation. Uh, so we've got another three lots of daily on the go there. Within here, so I've got some more um, perpetual spinach on the go. That's actually um, to go to uh, one of the guys at work. Got some more melons on the go, which again is for work. Got a tray of Swiss chard and some kohlrabi. So they've not started doing anything as yet. Oh, let's squash the uh, orchid. Uh, overwintered chili there. It's the um, avocado. A bit more dahlia, begonia, tangeties. So the tangeties are what I'm using as a companion planting this year. So I'm going to do some plantings of those around the allotment to hopefully entice the aphids away from crops. I need to get into some better light. Um, some more dahlias, I need to take the tops out of those. Uh, here, John Machino, courgette, which is a green variety. Salel, which is a yellow variety, and then green bush. Uh, here, got the um, first few melons there, and then the rest are all different varieties of um, cucumber. Need to pot those, a bit more dahlia. Coming down to here, tomatillos, essentially loads of dahlia in there, and at the back, that tray there is some fennel. Up to here, got uh, onion seedlings on the go, dahlia, and a few remnants of peppers that I've got a plan for. Then they've got the purple and the green basil. And then up here are all the chili peppers and normal peppers. All looking good and they get another feed in the next day or two so yeah plenty going on just need the weather to improve so um, beyond what I've got in here I well I am a little bit late compared to previous years but I still need to sow all the seeds of the squash so that is my butternut squash, um, yukikuri, um, Turks turban. Is there any others? No, those three. And then I've got three or four varieties of pumpkin that are sitting on the fence about as to whether to do those. <clears throat> Just because I've run out of space really at the allotment already. Uh, and then inside I've also got a jar of um, peas that have been soaking so I just like to give them a, a drink of water or basically let them soak in water overnight and then I can do sowings of those so they're going to be sown today and hopefully that is everything done can you hear that it's raining again so I literally at the allotment got wet came home got changed come back and now it's raining again couldn't make it up anyway if you've got any questions then please send them to me I always do my best to answer them for you if you like what i'm doing then please subscribe to the channel don't forget to hit that reminder button so you don't miss out future videos and above all else just enjoy yourself have fun and um well try something different make use of being indoors or uh, well yeah, go outside if you want to get wet again. So, till next time. And there you go. Bye for now.